let's get right into it. Number 10. The Elephant on LSD The year was 1962, and researchers at Oklahoma City's Lincoln Park Zoo decided to give an elephant enough LSD to make a thousand hippies see God. They wanted to see if LSD could trigger something called musth in elephants. Musth is basically elephant puberty on steroids, making male elephants super aggressive and ready to fight anything that moves. Their test subject was Tusco, a 14-year-old bull elephant. The scientists gave him 297 milligrams of LSD. That's about 3,000 times more than what a human takes to hallucinate. Their reasoning was simple. Elephants are big, so they need more. Within five minutes of the injection, Tusco started freaking out. He was trumpeting, running around like crazy, and then suddenly collapsed. The scientists tried to save him with antipsychotic drugs. When that didn't work, they tried barbiturates. That made things even worse. One hour and 40 minutes after the injection, Tusco was dead. The scientists wrote in their paper, It appears that elephants are highly sensitive to the effects of LSD. This experiment became known as one of the worst ideas in scientific history. This disaster led to major changes in animal experiments. Scientists now have to follow strict protocols before testing drugs on animals. Number 9. The Two-Headed Dogs A Soviet scientist Vladimir Demikhov created 22-headed dogs during the 1950s. He would take a small puppy, surgically attach its head and front legs to the neck of a larger adult dog. Both heads could function independently. They could see, hear, smell, and even drink milk separately. The smaller head would often try to lick milk from the larger dog's mouth. One of these two-headed dogs lived for 29 days. The dogs usually didn't survive because their immune systems would reject each other. The same problem we still deal with in organ transplants today. The smaller head would sometimes bite the ear of the larger dog out of frustration. Imagine being permanently attached to someone who keeps biting your ear. These experiments were eventually banned, but not before they helped pave the way for modern transplant surgery. The first human heart transplant surgeon actually visited Demikov's lab to learn from him. So every life-saving organ transplant today partly happened because a Soviet scientist decided to make two-headed dogs. Number 8. The Little Albert Experiment A nine-month-old baby loved playing with fluffy animals, especially a cute white rat. But scientists had other plans. Every time the baby tried to pet the white rat, someone made the loudest, most terrifying noise right behind his head. The noise was a terrifyingly loud clang from a hammer hitting a steel bar, and they kept doing it, over and over. The year was 1920, and psychologist John Watson wanted to prove that fears could be learned. Not only did little Albert become terrified of the white rat, but he started freaking out at anything white and fluffy. A rabbit made him scream. A fur coat made him scream. Even Santa's beard sent him into a panic. After successfully turning this happy baby into a nervous wreck, the scientists just stopped. They didn't even try to undo the damage. Some historians think they found him, but he died at age six from hydrocephalus. Others think he lived a long life, probably avoiding pet stores. This experiment is one of the reasons we now have strict rules about experimenting on humans. Because apparently, back in 1920, someone had to actually write down, maybe don't traumatize babies for science. Number 7. The Tickling the Dragon's Tail Incident Back in 1945, there was this chunk of plutonium nicknamed the Demon Core. Scientists at Los Alamos were doing experiments called Tickling the Dragon's Tail. They'd take two half-spheres of beryllium and slowly bring them together around the plutonium core. The closer these pieces got, the more neutrons would bounce around inside. Get them too close and you've got yourself a nuclear reaction. And their safety equipment for this deadly experiment? A regular screwdriver. One scientist, Louis Sloten, would hold the spheres apart with just the tip of that screwdriver. They called him the chief armorer of the United States. Then one day, the screwdriver slipped. There was a bright blue flash. The air itself was glowing from the radiation. Sloten knocked the spheres apart, but it was too late. He'd gotten a dose of radiation so high that his body started breaking down almost immediately. He could taste the radiation, said it tasted like acid. Nine days later, he was dead. But this wasn't even the first time this happened. Months earlier, another scientist named Harry Daglian had a similar accident with the same core. He dropped a brick of tungsten carbide onto it and got a fatal dose of radiation. After two deaths, they finally switched to remote-controlled robots and sophisticated monitoring equipment. The demon core itself was eventually melted down and recycled into other nuclear weapons. Number 6. Dr. White's Head Swapping Hobby Dr. Robert White thought swapping heads was totally reasonable. Back in the 1970s, he started experimenting with monkeys. 
he took one monkey's head and attached it to another monkey's body. The monkey could see, hear, smell, and move its facial muscles after the surgery, but it was completely paralyzed from the neck down. Connecting a spinal cord is like trying to reconnect a bundle of millions of tiny wires that have been cut. Each wire needs to find its exact match on the other side. We still can't do that today. The monkey lived for eight days. Those eight days changed medical science forever. Dr. White's experiments taught us how to keep brains alive during surgery. Today, doctors use his cooling techniques to protect patients' brains during heart surgery. But Dr. White wasn't just doing this for monkeys. He wanted to do this with humans. He thought he could save people with terminal illnesses by giving them new bodies. He even had volunteers. The medical community banned the experiments. They started calling him Dr. Frankenstein. Yet despite all this, he was nominated for a Nobel Prize. Not for the head swapping, but for his work on brain cooling techniques. Number 5. The Pituitary Gland Catastrophe Doctors in the 1960s had a solution for children who weren't growing properly. A hormone extracted from human brains. Scientists harvested tiny pituitary glands from dead bodies in morgues and funeral homes across the country. Each treatment required glands from up to 50 different corpses. The treatment worked perfectly. Children who weren't growing suddenly shot up like weeds. Parents were overjoyed, and doctors celebrated their breakthrough. But these harvested brains contained something sinister, prions, infectious proteins that turn your brain into a sponge. These prions cause Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, or CJD, creating holes in your brain until it stops working. The most terrifying part is that you wouldn't know you were infected for decades. The prions silently destroy your brain, and by the time symptoms appear, it's already too late. Thousands of children received this treatment between 1963 and 1985. In the late 1980s, these patients started showing strange symptoms. Confusion, loss of balance, personality changes, then came tremors, hallucinations, and complete loss of brain function. It was like watching someone age 50 years in just a few months. The treatment was banned, but 200 people had already died. Some recipients are still alive today not knowing if or when their brain might start deteriorating. Scientists now make growth hormones synthetically in labs, but those who received the original treatment live with a ticking bomb in their heads. Number 4. Harlow's Wire Mothers Imagine being a baby with two options, a cold wire frame that feeds you, or a soft cloth dummy that can't feed you at all. That's exactly what scientist Harry Harlow did to baby monkeys in the 1950s to prove that love matters more than just food. He'd take baby monkeys away from their real moms right after birth and give them two fake moms, one made of wire with a milk bottle attached and one covered in soft cloth without any food. The baby monkeys would only go to the wire mom when they were hungry. The rest of the time, they'd cling to the cloth mom like their lives depended on it. When scared or cold, they'd run to the cloth mom. Even when starving, they'd take quick trips to the wire mom to feed, then rush back to their cloth comfort zone. Then Harlow built what he called the pit of despair, a steel chamber where baby monkeys would spend months in total isolation. No mom, no friends, no comfort, just darkness and metal walls. The isolated monkeys became severely disturbed. When finally released, they couldn't interact with other monkeys. Some rocked back and forth endlessly. Others hurt themselves. Most couldn't figure out how to be parents when they grew up. Yet these horrifying experiments led to important changes. Before this, doctors thought babies just needed food and clean diapers. They'd tell mothers not to spoil their babies with too much affection. Harlow's work proved that love and comfort are absolutely essential, changing how we treat babies in hospitals and orphanages. These experiments were eventually banned and are now used as an example of how not to do science. Number 3. The Psychic Driving Experiments At the Allen Memorial Institute in the 1950s, patients would wake up strapped to beds, speakers blasting the same message repeatedly while being pumped full of powerful drugs. Dr. Donald Cameron was conducting these experiments at this respected Montreal hospital, attempting to reprogram human minds like broken computers. His patients were normal people seeking help for minor issues like anxiety or postpartum depression. His method was brutal. First, he'd put patients into drug-induced comas lasting weeks. Then he'd play tape recordings of simple messages on endless repeat. The same phrase would play up to half a million times. Messages like, your mother hates you, or you are worthless. One patient who came in for mild anxiety had the phrase, you killed your mother, played 200,000 times. Her mother was actually alive and well. 
The CIA funded these experiments through Project MKUltra. They believed this technique could create perfect spies or brainwash enemy agents. The results were catastrophic. Hundreds of people were left with permanent brain damage. Many couldn't remember their own children or how to read and write. Some couldn't even remember how to use the bathroom. The experiments ended in 1965. The surviving patients called it the sleep room. The tape recorders Cameron used still remain in the hospital's basement. Number 2. The Milgram Experiment Imagine sitting in a room with a machine covered in switches labeled with voltages, going all the way up to danger, severe shock, and XXX. A guy in a lab coat tells you to flip those switches, shocking someone in the next room. Every time that person gets a question wrong, you have to increase the voltage. You start hearing screams of pain through the wall. The person begs you to stop. But the guy in the lab coat just says, the experiment must continue. In 1961, Stanley Milgram wanted to find out what it takes for a normal person to follow a terrible command. 65% of participants kept going all the way to the maximum voltage, even when they heard blood-curdling screams and pleas to stop, even when there was complete silence from the other room, suggesting the person might be unconscious or dead. The person in the other room was actually an actor. The screams were pre-recorded. No one was actually getting shocked, but the participants didn't know that. Some participants were sweating, trembling, having nervous breakdowns. But they kept flipping those switches because a guy in a lab coat told them to. One participant was so convinced he'd killed someone that he offered to return his $4.50 payment. When Milgram asked psychiatrists to predict how many people would go all the way, they said about 1%. They were way off. Normal, everyday people are far more likely to follow horrifying orders than anyone expected. Number 1. The Stanford Prison Experiment In 1971, 24 college students signed up to get paid $15 a day to play pretend prison. These weren't hardened criminals or trained prison guards. Just regular college guys picked through a coin flip to play different roles. The prison was just the basement of Stanford's psychology building. Within just 36 hours, these normal college students started turning into monsters. The guards weren't just playing their roles anymore. They were forcing prisoners to clean toilets with their bare hands, making them strip naked and sleep on concrete floors. Some even started using psychological torture, like sleep deprivation and verbal abuse. One prisoner had such a severe breakdown that he started screaming uncontrollably, and that was just day two. Regular guys who probably helped old ladies cross the street were now making other students do push-ups until they collapsed. The experiment was supposed to last two weeks. It had to be shut down after just six days. A young psychologist visited the prison and was horrified by what she saw. The lead researcher, Dr. Zimbardo, had gotten so caught up in his own experiment that he didn't see anything wrong. He was acting more like a prison warden than a scientist. It took his girlfriend threatening to break up with him to finally snap him out of it. This experiment showed something scary about human nature. Give someone a uniform, a pair of sunglasses, and a little bit of power and they might just turn into someone you don't recognize. The experiment was banned and led to massive changes in how we do research on humans. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.